welcome everybody. Thank you for being here in Al Azar. Are sometimes interviews and talks and conversations with different people. This time we invite Monica Gulati. She is from India. That's right. And she has many, many years uh, working with herself in different different spiritual paths so right now she's going to tell us a little bit about herself and this experience in her spiritual life hello monica yeah hi claudia so um, so i am from gurgaon in india it's close to the airport in delhi which many people know international delhi airport so it's very close to that that's where i live and yeah so my i would say my spiritual journey started after cancer then in 2014 2014 i was Uh, having bleeding in my urine and i was uh, not sure what it is so after many checks it was very easy to find out that it was bladder cancer and after that i really wanted to know what created the disease and how to heal it and that kind of pushed me towards this path spirituality or towards mother your bindu later yeah So right now you are not having any more this uh, disease with you, yes? Uh, so after 2016, when I underwent a couple of uh, things in the hospital, after that I did not any time go back to the hospital. That's what I can say. So I, when people ask me whether you are in remission or how are you healthy or not. So I say I actually I have no clue <laughs> because because I don't go undergo the regular scanning and etc. But I can definitely say that I'm healthy and uh, I'm keeping my mental and emotional space also healthy, working on it. And with the words of Mother Shyurubindo and other teachers, it just helps to again and again kind of keep a check on the mental emotional spaces. which also result in physical diseases okay so if we can keep yeah if we can keep the inner space healthy then usually physical diseases would not appear uh, very rare that they would appear again yeah so i can say that i'm healthy right now yeah so uh, i am okay with hindi and i also am very okay with english uh, i tried to learn a bit of german when i was doing my studies in uh, zurich switzerland mm -hmm. but uh, not very fortunate <laughs> uh, successful at that so uh, i can understand uh, a bit of spoken german but uh, not really very clearly yeah okay so english is the preferred language Okay, thank you. Um, what is your actual profession right now? What, uh, where do you learn it? So my profession is Living Light dot in, um, and at Living Light, it's like online. You can say online so far because the moment we started, uh, the lockdown was happening, so not really any physical sessions. Uh, happened but we started to more and more do online zoom sessions just like we are doing it right now and that was i would i would say that uh, that was a blessing because that really connected people from all over the globe because in physical sessions you usually get people only around your area mm -hmm. so uh, we do uh, online sessions regarding you know we study words of masters and mystics 
mm-hmm. and uh, we study buddhism also nowadays online and do meditations chantings online those people who want to give it a try and we also do personal consultations one to one and all of this is not money oriented because uh, the idea when we started this organization was not money or business mm-hmm. so most of the sessions are open sessions one can join any time yeah very nice uh, i mm-hmm. like it uh, tell us uh, these uh, sessions one by one uh, what is this about uh, the consultations um, what did you do? so for example you know uh, in the crux of the matter is that we have to uh, start from our ego consciousness and move towards divine consciousness that's the crux now on the way we in life we meet many many challenges many difficulties diseases maybe one difficulty breaking of relationships maybe one uh, difficulty not getting good work you know having difficulties mm-hmm. at the job so when we encounter these difficulties we become many a times very disappointed why is this happening to me you know what uh, past a poor karma i may have done that this is happening to me you know, something like that <laughs> okay so uh, the idea at living light is to use all of the difficulties as opportunities in order to find our divine presence within or to move towards the divine consciousness and uh, we are tied up or glued in the surface personality the mask that we wear and we try to defend ourselves we become very insecure we want to have a stable ground in the outside situation the person a relationship a workplace which never really happens and can ne- never really happen because uh, that that is not supposed to happen the de- the way the universe is designed so we have to slowly find our ground within ourselves and not outside in any person place or relationship so that's what we come at usually uh, when we talk either personal counseling or spiritual you know this uh, get together the satsang that mm-hmm. we have online to deeply connect with them and know that there is something much larger much vaster within which we can bank upon uh, not banking upon the grounds outside which will always lead to disappointment so i don't know if that shortly answers The yes. Of the matter. Mm-hmm. Yes. Actually, that that answered three questions that I have further. So, <laughs> <laughs> it's very nice. <laughs> um, so well, but you say in all this explanation, you actually speak about karma, divine, ego. It's three words that maybe I understand, but not all our public will understand. Uh, yes. Yeah. So karma uh, is any action that we take. Okay, we can talk about it in the context of ego also. Mm-hmm. Divine consciousness. One way of uh, saying that is uh, the the one in you, in you, Claudia, the one in you who is looking at your thoughts. Okay. The one in you who is looking at your feelings, the one in you who is aware of the sense perceptions, the one in you who is aware of the opinions of the mind. Mm-hmm. That knowing is the divine consciousness. Now that knowing is the same in me. Mm-hmm. I also know my thoughts, I know my feelings. That knowing is the same in the animal. For example, that mm-hmm. may be walking around me. he knows that this is happening that knowing is the consciousness which we also call true consciousness divine consciousness and that is all pervading like it's not that you have a different knowing and i have a different knowing that's okay. why we say that the divine is one in all because that knowing is one in all sentient okay. beings so that is one way of uh, talking about divine consciousness or the divine 
other way of saying it also is perfection that mother would say that if you can't understand the word divine you can use the word perfection because perfection is a place that you can never reach whenever you know like you know artists are there musicians are there if you ask are you perfect they would never say that we are perfect exactly you know, they would say no 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 i have really a far way to go no matter how good they are so this infinity towards which we progress perfection towards which we progress that is also one way of talking about the divine beauty more beauty you know more harmony in work and relationships so that's one way of looking at divine again many many possibilities but just a few windows i'm to open it and when we talk about ego ego is any perceptions or limiting beliefs which i have in my head about my own self about the others mm-hmm. and about the whole world so all these limiting opinions and judgments and ideas i have in my head fixed jet opinions mm-hmm. they can be referred to as part of the ego ego consciousness is also that i am this body this is my thought my feeling so this iness and minus is the ego consciousness okay and yeah yes. and whenever we take more and more actions from the ego consciousness we add on to the burden of karma and this karma this burden will continue in the next lives so that's why human birth is called uh, very precious mother also says that human birth is very very precious because in human consciousness we have the ability that i can recognize that i am not the ego consciousness mm-hmm. and i can act from my true consciousness which we were talking earlier the knowing within so when i act from that knowing within i am not adding on to more and more burden of the karma which i'll have to repay one can say yeah It continues okay yeah. in the other lives that will be like a hell you know because uh, you have to continue repairing and go down and down and down, and down. So, yes yes yeah okay yeah so, <laughs> so we create our own hells in the mind exactly what you can say. Yes. and that is why it gives us the power that if i have created my hell i can actually dissolve the hell also because the power is with me Yeah, I think of to live in a heaven with a very good um, with the conscious of the divine, no? But yeah. I, I, there is uh, another question there. <laughs> uh, so you say that uh, the divine is like perfection, and that we never actually reach perfection, and I. I in myself I observe many people that that are like obsessed with beauty. I have a teacher before that he actually buy and buy and buy more art and more art, more art and refine and refine and refine all the time things, you know? And so I don't know if it was his way to to work with the divine maybe mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. each, each mm-hmm. person have you have the their own understanding but i don't understand if this own understanding is ego or everybody have the right to have their own creative understanding <laughs> about the divine so what happens is that uh, it's divine is like the sun shining Mm-hmm. and imagine that you are in a room and there is a curtain now this curtain is the ego consciousness yes and the divine can be called as the sun just a very rough metaphor i'm using so uh, if i become more and more conscious of my ego self then i can make this curtain very delicate it's like it will become very thin 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 so the light of the divine will shine very brightly uh, through this curtain mm-hmm. most of the times this curtain is very thick and very distorted so although we are always the servants of the divine we are working towards beauty we are working towards harmony but the ways are very distorted 
because of the thick brick wall in front of that you know, the sun so mother that's why mother says that collaborate with the divine and when she says collaborate it means become conscious you know, that what are the weaknesses in you become conscious whenever the ego self arises not follow the dictates of the ego self so usually we are doing all this we are moving towards beauty we are moving towards harmony in an unconscious attempt mother also remarks about that so when as a musician or an art as an artist mostly i am not wondering about what is my ego consciousness am I, am i consciously collaborating no usually not i'm just progressing towards beauty or harmony in work so it will always be although it will be a beautiful attempt it will always be a distorted attempt also so what will happen is that i would become obsessed with beauty so this obsession is the distortion this obsession is the distortion moving towards beauty is not the distortion but becoming obsessed and you know becoming really uh, yeah addicted to that Uh, how do you describe a spiritual life? Ah, okay. I think uh, I can say that it's more driven by heart. One follows one's heart. Mm -hmm. uh, again, there is no formula. I I can put it here. A few things that is that are coming to my mind is uh, a bit simple, you know, and uncomplicated. because the mark of any growth in spiritual path on the spiritual path is that the lives in the mind and the emotions they become lesser and lesser complicated usually as an ordinary consciousness we are living very complicated lives mm -hmm. you know minds and emotions are entangled everywhere and consciousness is scattered all around so the more we grow on the spiritual path i think the more we are ingathered you know scattered all around and it's like a simple and lighter living yes. and also something which is meaningful in its own area it doesn't have to be a very vast area not every person would become a speaker or not every person would become an author <laughs> but uh, in their own spheres of life it's a meaningful purposeful heartful life and progressive at the same Chance for us to progress. That's okay, right. following this question, um, do you follow any a spiritual path? Mm. Actually, I do uh, follow Mother and Sri Aurobindo. I do follow a little bit of Buddhism. I'm interested in. I do follow uh, Saint Kabir's couplets from time to time. but it's not that i follow them it's uh, like it was more like an happening on the path that in life i went through experiences which resonated very much for example with words of kabir ji or with words of mother and shurubindo with 